To talk more about these mega mining deals, I'm joined by Australia's Trade Minister, Simon Crean. Mr Crean, good morning. Certainly the deal with Seanook breaks that previous record which was set by ExxonMobil's Gorgon contract last August. Is this now a trend? Are we going to be seeing more of these resources mega deals? Uh, I think it is, and I think it's significant for a number of reasons. First of all, it's the size of the contract, which you've already mentioned. Secondly, it's another long-term commitment to uh, um, enter into long-term purchases by China. This was uh, started last year with Gorgon. So the fact that they're entering long-term contracts means the energy security issue and the cleaner fuel option. So in other words, um, the focus on cleaner energy sources positions Australia very well because what this project does is to demonstrate that uh, Australia's gas supplies aren't just in the northwest shelf, as important as they are, uh, but they also extend right across Australia uh, and arc over uh, into Queensland. So Australia is very much the Saudi Arabia of gas. It's a cleaner energy source. China is looking to cleaner fuel options, longer term commitments, <clears throat> to energy security and it's a very good space for Australia to be in. If we rewind the clock a couple of years ago, virtually no one had heard of coal seam gas and, and this was a byproduct which was discarded and now it's turning into a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, how much growth is left in that sector? Well, in, incredible uh, growth I think, uh, Heidi, and the fact that you've got strong foreign investment in this sector um, in this case, it's a British company, but the Germans have also uh, invested heavily into it. Uh, I think it's a demonstration not just of access to our resource, but for the technology that's associated with it, technology that's taking us into the cleaner energy space. Ironically, this is a good example of clean coal technology because it can leave the coal in the ground and uh, extract a, a, a cleaner energy source. So I think it pushes a lot of the buttons in the context of technology, technologi technologically driven solutions to the, um, the question of cleaner energy sources. Mr. Crean, it's Susan here in Hong Kong. Now, China buys a lot of Australia's natural resources, commodities. So you have to pardon me if I want to uh, get to the big topic uh, taking place on, on a lot of people's minds in China, which is the case of the four Rio Tinto employees being tried in Shanghai at this point. We have a three-day trial ending without a verdict. Uh, you know, from what you're seeing, what's happened so far, what do you think? Are they getting a fair trial? Well, um, part of the trial has been opened, uh, as you know. We made representations that all of the trials should have been opened. The question of state secrets uh, was not opened. I um, mean, the truth of it is there are elements of our trials that involve commercial in confidence that themselves can become closed, but it's hard to judge when uh, we haven't had access to that second component. Um, there are reports, of course, that uh, certain uh, um, charges have been um, um, acknowledged, but I think the, um, the case has concluded. We have to await the outcome um, before we can comment realistically any further, Lucy. Yeah, and Mr. Crean, let me just ask you, uh, we had some recent developments yesterday in court with a Chinese billionaire uh, supposedly bribing one of the employees with nine million dollars. Do you find it a little unfair and odd that the person giving the bribes is not being brought into court while the ones that are that took the bribes are standing trial? Well I think that there are issues that um, only when we know what the um, full evidence presented is and the basis of the findings I think they're the sorts of questions that uh, need to be answered then. I don't, I don't think we can realistically comment on those dimensions until we know the outcome of this case. We certainly don't want to pre prejudice it. We don't want to prejudge it. We have to uh, accept the circumstances in which people have been charged in uh, China and recognise the sovereignty of the Chinese legal system.
Okay. Now, Minister Kareen, let me just ask you about the time that has been, uh, you know, put forward in terms of how much jail time is involved here, five to 15 years. What sort of verdict are you expecting? What do you think is fair? And uh, five to 15 years, is that a little too harsh and severe in your view? I, I've got no comment. That's a matter for the courts. We do not want to prejudge anything in these circumstances. We don't want to do anything that would uh, impact upon the, um, um, the accused. Um, I'm just not prepared to comment about that. Uh, Mr. Crean, the, the Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, has warned all along uh, that the world will be watching. Well, the world watched. What's the verdict from the outside looking in? Well, I think the world is still watching. It wants to know the outcome. It wants to know the basis on which that outcome is arrived at. Until we see the record of the court, it's uh, too early to judge. But yes, the world is, uh, is watching. Um, it has been watching it for some time. Um, has it impacted on the uh, broader economic relationship? No. Um, I think that the evidence of the big deal that you've already talked about being signed yesterday demonstrates that the trade is very strong. Throughout the course of last year, China became Australia's largest trading partner, some $83 billion. It has displaced uh, Japan as um, the um, major trading partner. We've had a successful round, 14th round, in the uh, FTA, the Free Trade Agreement uh, negotiations, and we continue to engage with uh, China, not just through the um, medium of the free trade talks, but also through the second track approach, commercial to commercial operations, region by region. So I think that the uh, strength of the economic relationship uh, will continue to grow. China, of course, has big demands in terms of infrastructure and growth, not the least of which is the huge growth in urbanisation that's going to occur over the next 20 years. I mean, China is going to have to house something like 300 million people over the course of the next 20 years. This is the biggest urban development in the history of the world. Um, I would like to see Australia better placed uh, in terms of assisting in that urbanisation, in terms of smart building, uh, building products, uh, energy efficient uh, housing, all of those challenges that come. But it's not just the housing itself. You can't build cities of that size unless you have retailing and logistics uh, um, services, unless you also well, are encouraging financial services. So these are all the spaces that Australia wants to try and be in. Well, Mr Crean, it sounds like it, it, the future for Australia-China relations don't just depend on resources out of the ground. You're saying there is a wider opportunities for trade with Australia. Absolutely. I think that... Uh, and it, it, even in the resources sector, Heidi, it is the services dimension of the resources sector, the extractive uh, dimension of them. As it is in agriculture, better productivity in terms of the land, but take it to the services sector more broadly, and those areas such as logistics and retailing and urban design, urban construction, the, the uh, physical side of it, physical uh, infrastructure, these are, and, and, and financial services, there are incredible opportunities going forward. But I must say, it's not only in China uh, that this opportunity exists. It exists in the whole of Asia. It exists in India. And this mm -hmm. is something that Australia recognised over 20 years ago. We have yep. increasingly positioned our presence okay. in the broad Asian region, and that's where opportunity Minister rests Green? for us. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of opportunity across the Asia pack and even this uh, this budding relationship between China and Australia. Let me just ask you about the big topic, though, in trade relations uh, with the world's fastest growing major economy, and that's the currency. We have huge debates coming from U.S. lawmakers saying it is undervalued by as much as 25 to 40 uh, percent. What's your view here? Well, this is a matter for the Chinese government, but the message that I've continued to uh, convey, um, not just to China, but to all um, in Asia, is that why, what's, wh what are some of the reasons Australia has been able to weather the global financial crisis better than any other developed country in the world? It's because we took decisions 20 years ago 
to become a more competitive nation and engage with the rest of the world. One of the most significant factors that led to that strengthened competitiveness was floating the dollar, letting the market determine the appropriate rate. Now, I'm firmly convinced that that was not just an important message for Australia, it's also an important message for other countries to take on board. Whatever they do in the short term, they've got to think about the medium and longer term opportunities. If they want to become developed nations faster, if they want to move to a faster trajectory, they've got to be more engaging with the rest of the world, not just in product markets, but in mm -hmm. services and okay. in allowing investments into those countries. So it's the structural adjustment challenges, not just the opening of markets, that I think is the important Minister message Cream? that these countries need to have conveyed. Yeah, let me just pick up on what you just said, because you talked about China's currency policy as being a China matter. So what do you think of U.S. lawmakers trying to lecture and push China to do something about the yuan, about its own currency regime? Well, I think we're seeing a lot of that in the current circumstances of the bilateral relationship between those two economic uh, superpowers. Uh, and it is all about the rebalancing argument. I'm, I'm sure that you will continue to see those debates go on. Is it going to result in anything in the short term? Who knows? Because ultimately, that's a decision for China. But what I'm trying to say is that beyond the bilateral relationship and the pressures that go there, I think the future for any economy is built around two fundamental principles and that is engagement with the rest of the world, so opening mm -hmm. markets, but yep. secondly, being competitive enough to okay. take advantage Minister of those Green? market openings. Now, Unfortunately, right, we are just, out of time. Minister Green, I'm so sorry. I, we, uh, we have to go to commercial break, but thank you so much for your time.